most expensive parts of the rocket. That in turn drives down the cost of access to space. Right now, we're working on qualifying our feet of fleet of Falcon boosters and fairings to support 40 missions each. After liftoff, Falcon 9's first stage accelerates through the Earth's atmosphere and into space using nine Merlin M1D engines, which you have a great view of right there on your screen, eventually separating from the rest of the rocket and returning to Earth to be reused. Stage two will then continue to it to its target altitude where it will deploy today's payloads. After stage separation, the booster will be returning to landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base. Engine chill has started. There's confirmation that engine chill has started on board Falcon. And to date, we have landed a Falcon booster 301 times. Now turning our attention back to Falcon 9 on the pad today, above the first stage is the second stage, which has a single Merlin vacuum or MVAC engine that ignites after the first stage separates. This is what will carry the Worldview Legion satellites into orbit. And located above the second stage is the payload fairing, which is the large barrel structure at the top of the rocket. At 17 feet in diameter, the carbon composite fairing protects the satellites on their, way to, is complete. on their way to orbit. Those fairing halves are then jettisoned approximately three minutes into flight. The fairing halves supporting today's mission are both flight proven, with one half flying for its 16th time and the other flying for its 13th. After separation from the second stage, both fairing halves will return to Earth and be recovered by our teams. For more on today's payloads, let's take a look at this short video from Maxar. Now at T minus four minutes and 45 seconds, Falcon 9 is tracking no issues and the payload is healthy. Falcon 9 has been loading propellants since T minus 35 minutes and should finish loading at about two, T minus two minutes, two and a half minutes from now. The range is ready to support and weather is looking good for our mission this morning, but if for some reason we do not launch today, we do have a backup opportunity tomorrow at the same time. Next up, the transporter erector, or the TE, will retract away from Falcon. That's the large trust structure that you see next to the rocket on your screen. Hopefully, we'll get a view here through those clouds of oxygen venting from around the vehicle to see those clamp arms open up around the base of stage two. Strong back retract in progress. There's confirmation that the strong back is pulling away from Falcon 9. So right now we're just retracting slightly, but at T minus zero, ground hydraulic systems will pull the TE even further away from Falcon 9 as it lifts off. The first stage is connected to a launch mount at the base of the TE, but the structure is hinged to allow that retraction we just saw. You also heard it referred to as the strong back from the launch team, and it does a lot of heavy lifting in the lead up to launch. We use the TE both to roll the rocket out to the pad and raise it to its vertical launch position. Then the TE is also what we use to route the vehicle's fluids, power, and telemetry umbilicals from the ground systems to the rocket and payload. That is until Falcon 9 switches to internal power and clears the pad. Now at this point in the countdown, both the first and second stages are nearly fully loaded with 1 million pounds of kerosene fuel and liquid oxygen. Both stage one lock load is complete. Right on time there, we've got the call out that stage one lock load is complete. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll expect to hear that second stage call out in about 45 seconds. 
Now again, those white clouds you see around the vehicle is just chilled gas from above the liquid oxygen tank that we vent overboard to maintain pressure in the tank as needed. When that vented oxygen comes out into the California air, it condenses into clouds. At T minus 60 seconds, we should hear the call out that Falcon 9 has entered startup mode. This means that the rocket's autonomous internal flight computers have taken over the launch countdown. Then just inside of T minus two seconds, we light the M1D engines for liftoff. With just about two minutes to go, the two Worldview Legion satellites continue to be healthy. The Falcon 9 team is tracking no issues on the rocket, and weather is still looking green. The range is also ready to support- Stage two locks load is complete. There's that call out that stage two locks load has also been completed, and the range is standing by to support our T0 time of 1136 AM Pacific. Current gas close out. With that, we are stepping into the final minutes of terminal count. Falcon 9 is in startup. There's confirmation that Falcon 9 is on internal power and that stage one and stage two have begun pressurizing for launch. LD is go for launch. There you heard our launch director give the final go for launch. So at T minus 38 seconds, all systems are go for launch of Falcon 9 with the Worldview Legion satellites on board. T minus 30 seconds. T minus 15 seconds. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition. And the wind off is down to 9, so it's made back. Go world, new region. Vehicle pitching ground range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. At T plus 35 seconds and counting, Falcon 9 has successfully lifted off from Space Launch Complex 4 East, carrying the Worldview Legion satellites. In just a few seconds, we'll throttle Power the engine. Telemetry nominal. There's confirmation that engine telemetry is nominal. We are preparing to throttle the engines down in preparation for max Q, or the period of maximum the aerodynamic supersonic. pressure on the vehicle. And with that call out, we know that Falcon 9 is moving faster than the speed of sound. During ascent, we tilt the engines. Max Q. There's the call out for max Q. Now, the technical term for that engine tilt is called gimbling. That turns the rocket horizontally in what we call a gravity turn. The vehicle is still going up, but now we're also heading horizontally away from the launch pad. The rocket typically needs to go about 17,500 miles per hour in order to avoid being pulled back down to Earth and reach orbit. You can keep an eye on that stage one telemetry in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Now we have five events coming up in quick succession, and we should hear all of these called out by mission control, starting with MECO, then stage separation, SES-1, first stage boost back burn, and fairing separation. During MECO, we'll shut down all nine M1D engines on the first stage. Stage separation is when the first and second stages of Falcon separate from one another, and second engine start one is when we will light the MVAC engine on board the second stage for the first time. Shortly after that, we should also see those two fairing halves jettisoned.
engine cutoff. Stage separation confirmed. And back ignition. Stage one boost back startup. Fairing separation confirmed. So hopefully there you heard and saw those five events happening back to back, which again were Miko stage separation, SES-1, first stage boost back burn begin, and fairing separation. Of course, we will be attempting to retrieve these fairing halves again today once they fall back to Earth with our recovery vessel, Go Beyond. Stage one boost back shutdown. There's confirmation that the first stage has ended its boost back burn. Really great views on your screen right now too. We are just about T plus three and a half minutes into today's mission. And just about three minutes from now, you should see on your screen the first stage's entry burn begin. Now to start the entry burn, we will relight three of the M1D engines, starting with the center engine, known as E9, followed shortly after by the E1 and E5 engines. This is similar to pumping the brakes to slow down, and the vehicle will Both pass back. Both nominal trajectories. Confirmation there, we're on a nominal trajectory. Now we need to slow down to reduce re-entry forces, which then helps us to recover and reuse the first stage. During the entry burn, Falcon 9 is decelerating by firing its Merlin engines, but we're still moving really fast. This causes the vehicle to fly through Merlin's exhaust gases, also known as the rocket's plume, which deposits a layer of soot on the vehicle surface. That soot comes from the carbon-based fuel that Falcon 9 uses, and with each flight, the soot builds up a little more on the outside of the rocket. Oftentimes, prior to launch, you can see the soot from prior flights on the first stage. continuing to get really beautiful views from up in space. And of course, you can continue to track both the stage one and stage two telemetry in the bottom corners of your screen. On the left-hand side of the screen, you've got views of our grid fins with the Earth in the background. And on the right-hand side, you see our MVAC engine burning on board the second stage. On board the second stage are Maxar's first of two Worldview Legion satellites. Those satellites will replenish a portion of Maxar's existing constellation to expand capacity. Again, in the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you can track that stage one telemetry as it continues to decrease its altitude on its way back to Earth. And in the bottom right-hand corner, you can watch stage two's ascent to orbit. The grid fins that you can see on your screen right now are the primary mechanical mechanism by which we steer the first stage on its re-entry. We're expecting entry burn to begin in just about 15 seconds. Stage one entry burn startup. There's confirmation of entry burn startup. Great view of that on your screen as well. Reusability is key to lowering the cost of spaceflight, which enables more investments in critical scientific research. Stage one entry burn shutdown. With confirmation of entry burn shutdown, the Falcon 9 first stage supporting today's mission has now performed that entry burn 20 times.
The Merlins on the first stage are optimized for sea level. These achieve 190,000 pounds of thrust each during ascent and descent. At liftoff, Falcon both 9's first stage, there's confirmation that both the first and second stage are still on nominal trajectories. The stage one transonic. Confirmation there that stage one is transonic. Stage, stage one landing burn. Stage two FDS has saved. Right now, we're standing by for landing of Falcon back on landing zone four at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. Confirmation there of the 20th launch and landing for this first stage. This is the third booster, booster to complete 20 flights. And this landing marks SpaceX's 302nd recovery of an orbital class rocket, including Meanwhile, up in space, we're continuing to get beautiful view views from our second stage. Again, today's two Worldview Legion satellites will replace a portion of Maxar's existing constellation, joining over 95 Maxar-built satellites already in orbit. Maxar combines frequent monitoring over key areas of change with scalable analytics to deliver near real-time information to their customers. The Worldview Legion satellites on board stage two today are the beginning of a new generation of satellite made to image the Earth more frequently and at higher resolution than ever before. Worldview Legion will support multiple kinds of data collection, allowing one platform to support both monitoring stage and mapping missions. Guidance. Now we are standing by for confirmation of second engine cutoff one, expected in just about 10 seconds. MVAC shutdown. There's confirmation of MVAC shutdown. Nominal orbit insertion. And confirmation of good orbit insertion. While we are just a few minutes away from payload deployment, it's going to happen between ground station coverage. So confirmation will come on X when we regain coverage later on in the mission. All of us here at SpaceX want to thank our customer Maxar for entrusting us with today's launch. And of course, we'd also like to thank the Range and Federal Aviation Administration for supporting today's mission. This will conclude our webcast coverage of SpaceX's 44th launch of 2024 and 339th overall mission to date. If you're interested in even more launch coverage, be sure to check SpaceX.com slash launches for the most up-to-date information. Thank you for tuning in. We'll see you again soon.